But it is now my great pleasure to introduce to you a young woman. Isn't it wonderful to have young people in the audience as well as on the stage? This is Kathleen Hansen, who is studying Year 12 and who's been awarded the Burundara Young Citizen of the Year for 2012 for all manner of good works. We are thrilled that she has agreed to join us tonight to introduce a fresh perspective, a voice that is new and young and one that I'm sure will be heard many times in the years to come. I can't imagine what kind of courage it takes to face an audience like this when you're a teenager. But she did not flinch when invited to do so. Give Kathleen a very big welcome. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am a 17-year-old girl who, under current Australian law, is ineligible to vote in this upcoming election. However, while I am not entitled to formally express my views via the ballot box, I have been given an opportunity tonight to not only speak on behalf of myself, but on behalf of all those young adults who are deeply concerned about the environment that we will inherit. I'll first start by bringing up the elephant in the room, the damage to the Great Barrier Reef. Home to a vast and elaborate ecosystem, the reef has, for many, provided employment, breathtaking sights and lasting memories. Yet, as of 2016, as a result of increased water temperatures, 93% of the reef has experienced bleaching along the 2300 kilometre site. For many in the audience tonight, this Australian icon is a living treasure that you have cherished and enjoyed firsthand. The reality is, however, that it is in a state which reflects nothing but negligence and disrespect. How can we respond to such severe threats when some of those elected to lead us actively believe that global warming is not a concern? We're willing to put some 69,000 jobs and $5.7 billion worth of tourism revenue in jeopardy. Is it pride? Is it deception? Is it ignorance? My guess is it's a mix of all three. While we're at it, let's talk about Australia's reliance on coal. Even Shell Australia Chairman Andrew Smith can say that it is absurd that a nation as rich in natural gas as Australia persists in burning brown coal for electricity generation. Australia has access to abundant gas, wind, solar, geothermal, wave and biomass energy sources. So let's utilise them. Following through with that notion, let's look at the ramifications involved if such reliance continues without the intervention of cleaner energy. A damning report issued by the World Health Organisation in 2008, identified coal particle pollution as the culprit in shortening approximately one million lives annually worldwide. It has also resulted in the destruction of the genetic soil profile, displaces or destroys wildlife and habitat, as well as degrading the air quality in the immediate area. I could go on, but we may well find ourselves here beyond July 2nd and I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. However, what I do hope will have resonated with you is this, the inadequacy of our response with regard to environmental policies. I don't want to grow up in a world where I'm forced to take precautionary measures in order to ensure that the air I breathe is clean and pollution free. And I'm sure you don't want your children doing so either. That's why we have to make a difference. We have to stop the proliferation of brown coal before the environmental damage is irreversible. We have to stop destroying our World Heritage listed Australian icon and protect all those who rely on the reef, either for survival or employment. Reform of laws that enable environmental protection is possible, but it will require bipartisanship, people from both sides of politics looking beyond purely economic outcomes in order to protect our environment as a unified nation. 
While it may be challenging to lower water temperature in the near term, there are some immediate practical solutions to the problem of agricultural runoff to the reef. And it is true that shutting down coal mines would have a short-term economic impact, but this could easily be offset if we switched investment into industries which utilise renewable resources. Let's retrain, let's redeploy. So, while I'm here doing my bit by starting worm farms for my school or educating others regarding correct landfill and recycling items, I reckon it's time the politicians do their bit. So, in 40 years, I can reflect on the time in Australian political history and tell my children that I was witness to one of the greatest shifts in the political discourse of our country. When people stopped talking only of jobs and growth and started talking about our obligations as custodians of the future. Thank you very much.